Hi everyone, uh, it's Chris and Jen. We're here at the Sanford School, which we have recently learned, uh, thanks to Paul Wilson at CBC, uh, uncovering this, but this is going to be demolished. The first building in Canada that was entirely manufactured from Canadian materials. This was America, okay? This building would be a museum. There would be a jazz band. There would be a souvenir shop. There would be a guy on stilts. So there would be tiny little American flags everywhere and plaques. To be a little more clear about this, the proposal is to tear it down to expand that recreation center beside it. So who would really think of tearing this down? I'm wondering why the uh, school district school board did not consider this for their new headquarters. We live in an area of town where there are a lot of empty spaces. Um, there's a lot of uh, empty buildings as well. A lot of this is a, a lot of problems created with the way the city zones uh, and grants permission. A lot of it is the problem with the, uh, uh, the municipal governance here. There's a huge parking lot here. Eating past that is another empty lot that has this huge amount of land right here that apparently, because it's parking, is much more valuable than, than this building. Actually, a lot of uh, land around this building that could be used to put in your soccer field. If they're looking to put in sort of like a large field or something like that, they could move the offices and the rooms into this building. Um, and then you could have like the best of both worlds. I don't know if this has been considered because I haven't seen the plans. I don't think anyone's seen the plans except for Councillor Bernie Morelli uh, and Tim Simmons and, and some of the other uh, officials. They're just, I don't know. No one knows, right? The demolition process apparently is, is basically done and, and uh, signed, sealed and... Buddy, I know Councillor Brian McCaddy quoted in uh, the spec, I think today, was saying that, well, basically there's nothing that can be done on the permit end at this point in time. The permit's gone in, the deadline has passed. When in fact, there should be really an overall sort of policy that you don't tear down buildings like this. Towards how do you treat your, your, uh, you know, your built heritage? And I think this area, Ward 3, is very vulnerable. What we're hearing from the local councillor and from the school board uh, is that the community, uh, you know, if you have a young child or something, you, you want green space. So this building has to go. There is a lot of space here. There is parking lot upon parking lot um, that's not very well used and stretching all the way over to Bristol Street over there. On the other side of this, there's a large asphalt field as well. There seems to be a lot of options. There's a lot of options here. Uh, to make an alternative plan while still attaining all your goals and, and appeasing, uh, appeasing you know, the, the elements of your community. It's just whether they want to do that or not. There's, of course, interest in development in this area, and this, this area needs this kind of development. It doesn't need things to be torn down. Artists uh, live, work, studios. There would be no shortage of, of people to, to line up for that. There would be no shortage of this if it was just turned into regular condos or you know, turn into a senior's residence. You know, it could be anything, as long as it's not <laughs> torn down. So it's hard to imagine, it's really hard to believe that my counselor, our counselor for this area, um, didn't know that the demolition uh, application had been submitted before the heritage meeting about this building, um, so they could get on and, and demolish this thing as early as January. You know, if that's true, it's just been majorly disrespected by the school board chair. Like, I'd be really upset that someone pulled that behind my back in my ward. Me you out know, to hang. If I was pretty early, I'd be incensed right now. I would be like, whoa! He should go down to the district school board chair. He should be like freaking out. He should mess his hair up. He should be in Simmons. Like, why have you done this? Why have you embarrassed me? You I think someone like Bernie Morelli would argue, although it's my understanding that Bernie Morelli does not live in Ward 3, arguments that have been made that the Weaver Community Hub has also been consulted uh, as far as what uh, the future of the Sanford School grounds and buildings should be. And I think that's really interesting. We were talking a little bit about what does representation mean? I mean, the voices on the Weaver Community Hub, whose voices are they? How many are there? Um, were residents in, in the neighborhood encouraged to participate in this process? 
it's not clear to me because it, it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of transparency. Um, we didn't get any letter in our mailbox inviting us to any kind of conversation, and any we, kind of community like meeting right there. as yeah. to what would happen. And we, we live right around the corner from here. So it's confusing to me um, when a ward councillor says, well, the community's been consulted. We're four members of the community that have a very vested interest in a particular kind of project going forward. Were those the voices that, that represented the community? Yeah, we've got newspapers for like the Sherman uh, Community Hub, but we've never gotten any any uh, whiff yeah. of, of the, the Weaver Community Hub. There's, you know... <laughs> well, it's absolutely shocking that what could arguably be designated a heritage building. And when you give people a 10-day window to try to challenge something, I mean, that's just far too short a time. So you can't say that folks aren't interested when, when a, a demolition permit can be granted within 10 days. I mean, that's absolutely absurd. And I see it also as like aesthetically, financially, and maybe environmentally irresponsible to tear down a building that apparently we've never been inside. We're not allowed to go inside. The building's secured. But there's supposedly like beautiful brass trim, marble floors, you know, there's really tall windows. Uh, like just yep. the materials that went into building and again, um, the Sanford the Avenue first School. first building in Canada entirely built from Canadian materials. Well, when you could have sort of a mixed use kind of approach to what to do with this property, where, as we were saying earlier, you could have a green space, a more developed, larger green space off to the side. Around back of this building, there's ample room for parking. Um, if there were, you know, elderly residents in this facility, or if it was an artist space, there's enough space around back for parking. You can preserve the buildings. I find it really hard to believe with a fairly decent transit system, um, with a shift we should be making more towards cycling infrastructure. I find it really frustrating that there's always this outcry that, well, what about parking? <laughs> well, we're only about a 15 minute walk to the downtown core to James Street. I mean, really, how much parking do you need and who are you accommodating? Are you accommodating the residents of this neighborhood? It's a, um, are you accommodating folks who drive in from elsewhere, from other communities? Are they the ones that need the parking? If you had it as a residential or artist facility, a lot of folks would probably be walking, riding their bikes, taking public transit. How There's still ample space for teachers and staff of Kathy Weaver to park in the adjacent lot. There's still room for anybody who's using the mission services buildings and facilities. This is really not future-based thinking. Yeah, parking lots need to go. I'm all for green space, but uh, or lanes. Imagine if you had two lanes uh, and two way, you know, lanes on each side, how much more room we'd have to do these kind of great community developments. And you sort of have to look at the, the slightly bigger picture to realize that there's some other elements that could be changed that would benefit everybody. Yeah, let's talk about uh, building cycling infrastructure so that that'll help mitigate um, the, the impact of taking away parking spaces, you <laughs> yes. know, but like, so why not um, have that kind of initiative go in tandem with preserving a building and creating green space? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, by the way, folks, uh, there's no designated bike lanes uh, in this part of town. Isolated projects um, really don't adequately address the like wider range of issues that need to be addressed in this particular community. We didn't get any letter in our mailbox. We didn't get any telephone call inviting us to a meeting. Um, I, I don't think the onus is on us um, simply as citizens. I think it's also on the decision makers. Anybody out there who's thinking of um, getting involved as either a councillor or trustee in this area, please consider it. It's, it we, we need um, uh, fresh perspectives and I know I would be willing to to help uh, volunteer my time to, to make that happen.